today's topic of lecture is optics of the eye in last lecture is lecture first was in the general optics that is related to the properties of the light properties and various type of lenses mirrors and image formation in that so today we are dealing with the optics of the eye so eye is an optical instrument which can be compared with the camera where eyelids act as a shutter cornea and crystalline lens act as a focusing system of the camera then iris act as a diaphragm which regulate the size of the shutter and also the amount of light entering the eye choroid act as a darkened interior and retina is a light sensitive plate of field This is the diagrammatic representation where we can see the <coughs> image formation in the eye and camera, which are analogous. So this diagram shows the functioning of the eye, which is like the closed circuit, uh, closed circuit color TV system. Here we can see the image formation in the eye occurs on the retina. Then it travels to the optic nerve and goes to the brain in the visual cortex. Where it is processed, and you can see the picture. Likewise, in the CCTV camera, you can see that this is the camera where image is recorded. Then, through the signal cable, it goes to the viewing monitor, and you can see the image. So, what are the components of the eye as an optical system? So, it is broadly divided into two parts: that is, corneal part and lens part. Corneal part includes tear layers, that is, tear film. Which separate the tear layers from the aqueous humor. Then lens part is separate the aqueous humor from the vitreous humor. As a whole, focusing system of the eye is composed of the cornea, aqueous humor, crystalline lens, and vitreous humor. This is the homocentric system. The lens. Then this forms a very strong refracting system of a short focal length. The dioptic power of the eye is plus 58 diopters. Out of which cornea contributes to plus 43 diopters. The major contribution is from cornea. Then crystalline lens contributes plus 15 diopters of the power. So this is the diagram of the eye. Here you can see the various structures of the eye. It is already covered in. Then components of the optical system of the eye. First start with the cornea. So cornea is a highly transparent structure of meniscus form. Diameter is about 12 mm. Central thickness is 0.5 to 0.6 mm. Radius of curvature is different in anterior and posterior surface. Anterior surface has 7.7 mm curvature and posterior has 6.8. And refractive index of the corneal substance is 1.376. And refractive index of the aqueous humor in contact with the posterior surface of the cornea is 1.336. Then coming to the anterior chamber. Depth of anterior chamber is important. Reduction of 1 mm in depth increasing the which increases uh, total power by 1.4 diopter and vice versa. That is increasing the uh, depth by 1 mm decreases the total power by 1.4 diopters. So pupil, pupil is a opening in the iris. So it regulates the amount of light. The base retinal image obtained when pupil diameter is about 2.4 mm. Which affects the aberration and diffraction, which we will see in later slides. Pupil size tends to be adjusted automatically to give optimum visual acuity over a wide range of lumens. Then coming to the crystalline lens, it has double purpose that supplies the balance of eye's refracting power and also provides a mechanism for focusing at different distances. This is called as accommodation. So anatomically, it composed of the Layers of fibers in radial patterns and continues to grow in bulk with fresh layers on the exterior. It is susceptible to the various changes in imprint flexibility and transparency. Central thickness increases while radial curvature becomes longer. So, diameter of the lens is about 9 mm. It is biconvex. The radius of anterior surface is more, that is 1.7 times more than the radius of posterior surface. In unaccommodated state, central thickness is around 3.6 mm. 
during accommodation both surface mainly anterior as you move stepy curve form and central thickness increases vertex of the anterior surface moves forward and decreases the depth of the anterior diameter then coming to the vitreous it is a transparent gel which fills the posterior segments in contact with the posterior segment of the lens the refractive index is around 1.336 then retina retina act as a screen on which the image is found part of the conical structure surface at a radius of curvature of 12 mm curvature of retina has two advantages image from the formed by the optical system tend to have curved surface curvature of the retina is of right order from the point of view stiffly curved retina covers the much wider field of vision that is in person of other retinal factor important for the image formation are photoreceptors these are the cones and rods then configuration of the foveal pit and tightly packed cones in the foveal region which contribute to the finest resolution of the retinal image here you can see the orientation of the retinal cones it is such that they function as a light pipes or fiber optics which is directed towards the nodal point of the eye In this diagram, you can see the various cones shown as a light pipe or fiber optic. This optimally receives the light that forms the image and partially prevents the light from being scattered to the neighboring cones. Then the yellow macular pigment at the macula is considered to act as a blue filter, which limits the chromatic aberration and absorbs the scatter. Dominantly of shorter wavelength, that is blue end of the spectrum. Then schematic eye. This is the schematic eye proposed by the various scientists like Goldstein, Listing and Gauss, Cheney, then Helmholtz. So first, Goldstein developed the most authoritative and explanatory model of the schematic eye. So in the schematic eye, there are various cardinal points you can see in the schematic eye so there is principal foci there are two principal foci f1 and f2 then f1 at uh, anterior to the cornea is 15.7 mm and f2 is behind the cornea 24.4 mm behind the cornea then there are principal points p1 and p2 so p1 located at the 1.35 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea p2 is a 1.6 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea there are two nodal points in the posterior part of the lens this n1 is 7.08 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea and n2 is 7.33 mm behind the anterior surface of the cornea this is the diagrammatic representation of the schematic eye where we can see the various cardinal points then according to goldstein total diopter power is 58.64 diopter this is in the accommodation relaxed if, if accommodation is maximum it is 70.57 then corneal system contributes to the 43 in accommodation relaxed state and lens is 19.11 so accommodation maximum occurs at the lens system the corneal system power remains the same but the lens system from 19.11 increase to the 13.06 then gulsen's data on refractive surface indices shows that cornea is a has a refractive index of 1.376 aqueous has 1.336 lens cortex has 1.386 and lens core has 1.4063 and vitreous is 1.336 Then coming to the listings reduced eye. So listings simplified the data by choosing only one single point and one nodal point. But Wilson has two nodal point and two principal point. So principal point T is located at 1.5 millimeter behind the anterior surface of the cornea, which is due to the vertex of the central refractive surface. Nodal point is 7. 
0.2 millimeter behind the anterior surface of the cornea which is located in the lens then anterior focus point and posterior focus these are the two focal point f1 and f2 f1 located as 15.7 millimeter in front of the anterior surface of the cornea and f2 is located at the on the retina which is 24.13 millimeter behind the anterior surface of the cornea then tonder converted cardinal point into the round figures is oversimplified reduced eye model where we describe as a single curved surface so principal point is roughly 2 millimeter behind the cornea nodal point is at the 5 millimeter behind the cornea the anterior focal length is f1 is 15 millimeter and f2 is 20 millimeter and the refractive index is 1.336 and total power is plus 60 diopters retinal image size which is determined by easily is in the reduced uh, eye model so nodal point is at the center of the curvature and the single anterior refracting surface thus the ray from the top of an object directed toward the nodal point we go straight on the retina without bending this is the diagrammatic difference how image is formed at the retina this brown color with the arrow shows the coming from the object this black color line the principal line where you can see the at nodal point it crosses and it causes the inverted image on the retina that is f dash y so image size in ametropia that is in case of refractive errors so it is determined by the refractive power and actual length of i then coming to the Purkinje Sanson images or cataptic images these are the images on the each refracting surface of the eye which also act as a reflecting surface so there are four Purkinje sensor or cataptic images which are from inside the eye result of the reflection so one from the anterior surface of the cornea second is from the posterior surface of the cornea and third is from the anterior surface of the lens fourth is from the posterior surface of the lens so this is the diagrammatic representation where we can see the first image is from the anterior surface of the cornea second image is from the posterior surface of the cornea then third is from the anterior surface of the lens and fourth is from the posterior surface of the lens out of which first second and third form the which is reflected from the convex reflecting surface so it is erect and virtual and fourth image is from the concave reflecting surface which is real and inverted so what are the clinical images of clinical application of Purkinje images so Purkinje image test can be used in cataract and ophakia so in case of cataract we can see the four Purkinje images in ophakia only two Purkinje images are there also it is used in keratometry that is measurement of the curvature of the cornea is based on the first working image that is coming from the anterior surface of the cornea then Hirschberg corneal reflex test which is used for diagnosis of the squint is used the first working image then changes in the lens during accommodation study using third and fourth working images is axis and visual angles of the eye so eyes has three types of angles one is optical axis visual axis and fixation axis and angles are angle alpha angle gamma and angle kappa so this is the diagram showing the various axis and the angles so here you can see the ar is the optical axis and visual axis is denoted by the of then fixation axis is by OC. So the angle alpha is O and A. That is, it is between the optical axis and visual axis. So angle between the optical axis and visual axis is called as angle alpha. Then angle kappa is angle between the optical axis and the pupillary line. So it is OPA. Angle kappa is denoted by OPA. Then angle gamma is denoted by OCA which is between the optical axis and the fixation axis so 
total the optical aberrations of the normal eye. So eye is not optically perfect. So it has lapses or defects of the perfection which is called as aberrations. So there are various physiological optical defects in the normal eye. It can be listed as diffraction of the light, spherical aberrations, chromatic aberrations, dysentery, oblique aberrations and coma. So natural mechanism to decrease aberration is by cutting off the peripheral base of the eyes. So people cut is the cutting the peripheral base. Then eye refracting this core of the nucleus of the lens, then the peripheral cortex. Then third is a style property effect. So yeah. it says that the retina is more sensitive to the perpendicular rays rather than oblique rays. So it neglects the peripheral rays. Then low sensitivity of the peripheral part of retina is also most important in decreasing the aberration. And coming to the diffraction of the light, it is the bending of the light rays caused by the edge of an aperture or rim of the lens. The actual pattern of the diffracted image is to be produced by lens with a circular aperture of pupil is a series of concentric, dark, and bright rings with a dark spot at the center. So it is known as a airy disc. So this is the diffraction of the spherical aberrations. Spherical lens refract the peripheral rays more strongly than the paraaxial or central rays. It brings more peripheral rays to focus closer to the lens. Here you can see the peripheral rays are more reflected or reflects than the central rays. Then what is chromatic aberrations? It is a result coming to the fact that the index of the refraction of any transparent medium varies with the wavelength of the incident light. In human eye, which is optically act as a convex lens, blue light is focused slightly in front of the red. In emetropic eyes, slightly hypermetropic or for red eyes, the myopy for the blue and green rays. What is decentering? Cornea and lens surface alter the direction of the incident light rays. These surfaces are not centered on a common axis. Center of curvature of the cornea is about 0.25 mm below the axis of the lens. However, effect of deviation is usually small. Oblique aberrations, objects in the peripheral field are seen by virtue of the oblique incident narrow pencil and the rays which are limited by the pupil. Note is coma, this is in different areas of the lens and from the foci lens other than the cheek focus. So this produces the image plane of the coma effect from the point source of the light. Here you can see the diagram. Different areas of the lens which are focused in the different plane. It causes effect called as coma effect. So that is all about the optical eye. Thank you.